Hey, Hound Dogs, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. Welcome to On the Air with Power Squared, a weekly look behind the scenes what we hope will be everyone's favorite comic book, Power Squared. Uh, we're joined uh, this week by Julia Cannon, our colorist. Hello. Hey, there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we thought we'd talk a little bit about, uh, you just finished working on issue 15, How They Met. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And... Uh, <laughs> Just uh, anything, uh, you know, interesting about it for you? Uh, how was your um, experience, it, you know? It was, like, interesting mostly because, um, like, I know I'm still fairly new to the, like, just, like, to the crew. But, like, it was nice, like, seeing, like, or coloring in, like, the different characters, especially, like, the other, like, Yoka who were after Mocha. If, like, yeah. So it was nice doing that. And also um, just also, like, working with, like, just knowing where exactly where the shadowing was this time, it really did help a lot because um, Rachel, like Rachel did give me like a bit of a template of to work with. So it made it like a bit easier, but obviously like I still had to like make it like, I guess the, the right word is clean because I don't know what the heck right terminology is. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither do yeah. we, so you're right here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, um, and it was also just nice, like seeing, like seeing, like the boys, like younger and just like before. Right. It was a bit. I, I, I think. Okay, it was mostly my fault because I never said anything. But like, I guess everything turned out okay. Um, was like I can see like the context, especially like with the boys. Like obviously, like Eli was like upset about something, and like Marty was trying to calm him down. Mm -hmm. Though, and then with other certain action scenes, I didn't know if it was appropriate to add like certain templates. I'm pretty sure like I added a couple. Especially like when um, like Mocha was being spotted during a chase. Uh -huh. So like there were times where I didn't know if it was appropriate or not. But like you guys didn't say anything, so I guess it turned out for the best. <laughs> <laughs> so we should be watching you closer than we are. I see. <laughs> but not, um, like because like this time around, like we did, like I didn't like see like the hello. I didn't see the um, like I guess the script for it. So like in terms of context, it was a bit harder. But like seeing like the panels and everything and what everything was going on it like i still had like a good idea of like what was going on obviously moko was being chased they're trying to find her and then stuff happens and then with marty and eli they're going through their own conflicts as well so right. it was like it was like it was just basically looking at it going ah i see and then just going from there <laughs> well my apologies if we didn't send you a script that wasn't in oh yeah <laughs> um and i i did uh, i think I, I mentioned this in a uh, message we i did put the the new script in with uh uh rachel's line art yeah i saw it okay mm -hmm. so we, have you read it yet no i'm kidding it was just last uh, night. i skimmed through it i skimmed uh, through it the other day so, but like i've just been i've just been like um helping out around the house so i haven't been like that's okay on the computer so to say <laughs> It's okay if you haven't read it. <laughs> w. So um, a lot of the coloring that you're doing is sort of kind of has already been done. I mean, you know, the coloring for Marty and Eli and everyone's hair and eyes and all that sort of stuff has sort of been kind of set in that little color guide. D does mm -hmm. that, I mean, is that restrictive for you or, you know? Um. Not really, because obviously with characters and character concepts, they're going to, they're always going to have a set, like, color guide, or else, like, it's going to be weird if you hired me, and then out of nowhere, the twins, they start having, like, brunette hair, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, huh. um, like, once, but, like, once you gave me a good idea of, like, what their color palette was in general, and then obviously me reading through the comics prior, I, that's when I started getting a good idea, like, okay, what would they actually wear in terms, like, what colors would they wear in their personality and how would that match, like, fashionably as well? So it's, like, like, obviously, if you guys had, like, had a certain, like, color scheme you were going for for a certain issue, you would tell me. Yeah. But, like, um, for the most part, like, like I've learned, like, um, like, Marty is more of, like, cool colors, like, blue and purple and stuff, and Eli is more around red and orange. If I mixed up those two, I'm very sorry. I'm bringing oh, yeah. it <laughs> You got them right, yes. <laughs> you, th you think? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but um, after like, at, but like I said, after looking at like the prior issues, like before I came on board, I got like a good idea of like what they would be wearing like during these issues and here on out. So like, just 
pretty much matching the schemes that I've seen before and then just putting my own twist to it, pretty much. Okay. Like, yeah. And then obviously, like, there are characters who do, like, wear... Like, who don't have a color scheme, but, like, just going like going back to a cookie cutter, just going back to the old issues, especially with, um, like, other characters who... Like, the side characters who do, like, wear different costumes every now and then. Like, obviously, they're not going to have the same colors all the time. So. Right, no. Yeah, that'd like, be... I always, yeah, I always that's think like, that's weird when nobody ever changes shirts. You know, yeah. thirty years wearing the same shirt part. <laughs> I mean, uh, that means you take that means they take care of their laundry really well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, like, like, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's just like going back just reading the other issues. I'm just like, okay, so this is like their like staple color, and then I can just play around with the values from there. If nothing doesn't look right. I'll either make it lighter or darker or maybe just change it all together, but still make it like it still fits their personality in a way. Right. So like I know like with Kirby, he's mainly like green. I know with Don, he mainly like rocks the orange and stuff like that. So it's like it like I just go from there. Okay. I never actually thought about them rocking. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's fine. It works. And we're not complaining, obviously, so it's okay. <laughs> It's like you guys didn't say anything bad, so I'm in the clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait. Is there some? I mean, I know you're a creative person. Obviously, you get to add your own little touches, as you say, to it. And I mean, I guess I want to be. You know, you're able to express yourself a little bit, right? In this. Yeah. Like, um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but like, I think in issue thirteen or fourteen. I was playing around, I think, yeah, I think it was issue 13. I was playing around with the crowd when Marty was about to get his butt beat. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I actually played around with a bit. Like I used, like I actually, um, if people notice, I tried to find like characters that fit the best. So I ended up taking like the color scheme of um, like Undertale. And if you look closely, you'll see like Frisk and Chara. And I think, <laughs> I forgot the character for the life of me, but he's the dude with like, it's either New York, New Jersey accent. I can't remember. But he's like, yeah, put like a little like TF, like Team Fortress 2 Easter egg in there too. Of, like, <laughs> <laughs> of someone in there too. So like, sometimes I'll look, I'll look at the characters and then my brain will be like, hey, this character looks like this. And it's like, ah, I couldn't think of a color scheme before. Let's just go with this. <laughs> All right. So yeah. you are you are able to express yourself, as they say. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I don't want you to feel like it's just you know it's like homework. You gotta okay, you know, too much. <laughs> homework I get paid for. Oh, God. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to be you know I want to be a cl a creative collaboration, not just you know fill in the yeah, blank, yeah. you know, paint by numbers too much. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it's like especially like especially with my own work, obviously, like like if we're put, going on a tangent here, um. Like, obviously, with my own work, I always get burnt out, so I always try to make it fun. Like, if not with personal work, also, like, either commission work or just any other freelance work I get myself into, so it's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, are you doing other work besides Power Square? Um, Which you can at talk the moment, about? I mean, I've know. just been doing, like... Yeah, oh, yeah, um, like, uh, just like the usual, like, people will come to me going, um... Actually, since like we're still in quarantine, technically, a lot of my friends have been going into Dungeons and Dragons, so they'll just go to me going like, "Hey, Julia, can you draw my character? I'll give you money." And I'm just like, "Sure." <laughs> 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 like, um, like, um, and then on top of that, like, um, I have like a couple of friends that want me to draw like either like Twitch emotes for them, which is like an affiliate thing for here. So, like, um, usually. Like if like anyone out there who doesn't know, if you're an affiliate on Twitch, you actually have a chance to make money. That's like not really partner, but it's like it's like another stepping stone. Mm -hmm. So emotes, if you use emotes, people can subscribe to you, and then they can use those emotes throughout other people's like chat rooms on Twitch, and then you also get some revenue from that. Uh. So like, people like obviously they don't want to rip like something off the internet and then make it theirs because like that's just bad news for everybody yeah so sometimes either they'll draw it themselves or they'll hire someone to like draw it for them and then it just goes from there okay which i guess but, yeah. brings us a little bit to uh one of the topics i want to talk about is our twitch <laughs> uh, power squared mm -hmm. um 
it's I don't know we're not doing that much with it in some ways as far as the, what, one of the things I, I appreciate about your when you're drawing uh, when you're coloring power squared is you have a little thing uh, that explains like Rachel did the artwork and how they can subscribe or how they can find out more about us things like that I think that's really nice yeah. of you to do yeah, especially with Rachel's part, because I've had a couple people in my chat going like, oh, wow, you're a really good artist. Did you draw that? And I'm just like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I got to make this. OK, like and then like uh, one night I'm just like, OK, I have to make this clear. So that's when I started putting those little banners of like artist by Rated Art Rachel. And then obviously like where the comics from if they want more information and then I'll just put like your links up and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I, I totally appreciate that. And I think yeah, no and uh, um, it just kind of it also like it's also for me because like it's like a, it's gonna be it's gonna be at that point because I've had people who are like oh what is this what are you doing and it's like I don't mind answering the question which is why I always had that command um, exclamation mark powers because like whenever I do the stream it's not that I don't mind like explaining it it's just like once you explain it like a hundred times it's like I didn't do this art this is a, this is my this is part, one of my part time jobs I this, if you guys want more information I'm not gonna keep on pasting the link because that's just like counterintuitive for both parties it's like it's like it's like it's a meme like saying hey streamer where'd you get this and then obviously the answer is right in front of you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but i mean we but don't yeah. we don't have anything like that on our twitch so if anybody really wanted to find out more about us they would eh, yeah, walk, walk away <laughs> yeah. i guess yeah it's like it, it's also just a thing of like i'm also working with others so it's best to like like it's also like on your end like if people actually want to read it then like Dude, just like that's why I have like that's why I, it's it was also just like a miscommunication thing with it went on for a while it's just I finally did something about it so I just like people saw the stop like bombarding like oh like you're really good at drawing and then it's just like I appreciate you saying that however yeah. I, I give where credit is due because like also just honor system as well so it's yeah. like Rachel drew this and she deserves all the credit and all the love and stuff like that so right. like and then well, you guys obviously created the story, so it's like you guys. Yes, we do deserve all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> now this would have happened if we hadn't thought of it. Really think of the fact. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just more of like a thing because like it's it's also like a, a guilty conscience of mine. I'm like I'm not in charge of this. Like I'm here as a, like I was also like I'm here as also like a freelancer. So I'm like, go to them if you want more info. I, there's only so much I can give you. <laughs> no, but again, I think it's really nice that you. Uh, are showing people you're doing the work and then you tell tell them about or you know have a thing where they can find out more and, and that you're giving rachel i thought that was really nice when i saw it so. yeah of course yeah it's just like it's just something i've been like i guess like lagging on my end because like working like working stuff for like especially if like you're not the one always um putting in the commands all the time so like it's always it's i'm not gonna say it's hard it's just more of like I sometimes forget to do it, so like I just had one day I'm just like, yeah, I should probably do this, and then boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but yeah, it's just, but yeah, it's like, it's like one of those things. Like I've like I've been doing this for a while. I should probably start answering like the question more. For example, it's like, oh, what are you doing? And then I'm just like, okay. And then I just put everything on OBS and called it a day. <laughs> <laughs> um. So how long have you been? How long have you had a Twitch channel? Um, I've had it for like a good while, but I didn't start doing anything until about like a few years ago. I want to say about 2017, like late 2017, early 2018. I could be wrong, but I think that's where it's from. And then I've just been going on and off from there. Like I first started out with art streaming because before I, uh, like I just had a laptop, so I couldn't do much there. And then, um, a yeah, and aside from a laptop, I also had a PS4, and like I just like I just did like Resident Evil streams from there, which like before what can I mention? I like I used to speedrun Resident Evil Four. Mm -hmm. That's what I tried to gain traction with. Yeah. But then obviously I'm just like I like I started off with art, so like I still wanted to keep that in my channel. So like once I built a PC, it's like I found like yeah I can actually do more now. So like like aside from gaming, I also, that's when I started doing more art stuff. And like it's just been going from there. And how often a week do you? Uh, um, stream? I don't have like a, I don't have a consistent schedule right now. But like I try to stream at least once or twice a week if I can. 
Like there, it's like usually either like on a Friday or like on the weekends. But like I want to try to like get like a good covert schedule so like like it shows like that I'm doing everything like whether if I'm playing video games or if I'm working on Power Squared or commission work or just even personal work. And also just an incentive for me to not be a couch potato all day. <laughs> <laughs> Quarantine has made me weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. You're, you're not getting out of the house, I assume. Yeah, it's also just been really hot. So even if I wanted to, it's like yeah. no, please. <laughs> Air conditioning is a nice thing. Yeah, yes. only if it works, though. Only if it works. Ah. <laughs> we just had ours worked on. Our they come around every, twice a year and maintain it. So that was cool. Ah lucky <laughs> i have like a air condition we have like um like a separate air conditioner like we have like three separate air conditioners so there's one in my room one in grandma's room and one in the living room unfortunately mine makes way too much noise when it's too hot and it doesn't do anything so i'm just like <laughs> i have to wait until <laughs> it gets cooler to use it it's like counterintuitive and i'm just like why are you like this <laughs> it's fine yeah. but like but yeah, it's also just California and the heat wave, and it's just it's fall already. Why? I know. <laughs> Should be a hundred degrees outside in October. Yeah, it, it's, fine. That. No. it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, like just you would think like with quarantine, like you would be like especially if with introverts, you'd be more productive. You'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> do you I have, try my best. <laughs> do you have sort of a daily schedule that you're trying to keep? Uh, I hence the word try <laughs> yeah. but like i always try to like even if it's like working on one panel or even like a little bit i try to like do like at least a little bit bit of work every day so that way like i don't like like i try to do at least a little bit so i don't have to deal with it tomorrow yeah it's like it's a good it's a good thing and also just yeah <laughs> um yeah like so I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, that answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> so you just try to do something, but do you, do you have a general, like, you know, um, I always try my best to at least get some work done during the daytime. If not, then I'll work a little bit during the nighttime and then just relax from there because just, because just like sanity. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, if I do manage to get work done during the day, like, um, I, I've been, like, I, I always, like, overdo it, but I'm trying to do the mentality of, like, get work done during this time frame and then, like, have at least a cutoff for me to either either stop streaming or at least stream fun stuff or just, like, stuff that isn't related to work yeah. just to keep myself sane. For the most part, if you've noticed on, like, Discord, I've been playing a lot of Genshin Impact. <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> that game. But, um... Like I've learned, especially like, especially with working from home, you have to give yourself a cutoff, or else you're just gonna mentally drain oh, yourself. Yeah. Which... <laughs> yeah, I'm working home from home. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, especially with like we don't know what's gonna be going on in the future. With Nothing good, I think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I was looking at like after the cutoff of the two weeks from the beginning, he said he's the one that said like, oh, like two weeks is gonna blow over. A month goes by. Hey, Dad, so how's that thing about everything blowing over going for you? <laughs> <laughs> like, but, um, but yeah, something, like, even before quarantine, because, like, even before, like, the only job I had was, like, an, was, like, a part-time thing with my aunt, and it was, like, an office job. Uh -huh. But even then, most of my time was just working from home, which was just mainly freelance, which wasn't a lot, but it's, like, it's still, like, something, you know? Right. But the one thing I'm still learning today is just trying to give myself a cutoff of, like, there is such thing as working too much, so just, like, anyone at home watching who's also working from home, just give yourself a break, or else you will mentally hurt yourself, and that is not good. <laughs> well, you, so, there's sort of that, oh, I can just do a little bit more, I can do a little bit more, you know, and then yeah. it's only at 6.30. You're like, oh. Like, for me, it's like, I can work a little bit more, and then it's 2 a.m., and you're just like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I told yeah. yeah, during uh, Lightbox Expo, which they did online this year, there was actually a panel uh, where an artist was talking about uh, how uh, it's easy for artists for to, for some reason, trap themselves in this mentality that they have to be, like, constantly uh, working. Like, yeah. from 
the beginning of the day to the end and like no breaks in between but it's actually better to uh pace yourself uh yeah so then that way yeah you keep your sanity and it stays fun yeah 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 that's that's actually like it's it's also um like i actually saw a video a while back if you guys are familiar with the animator jaden animations she actually did like a little segment on like burnout so it's like i i try not to overdo it too much or else it's going to be one of those things where i look at my either like work i'm doing for other people or even my own personal work and i'll and i'll go like wow i hate it and i don't like that (laughs) i don't like that mentality i'm just like i should probably take a break which is like which is, like, um, something I've been trying to do a lot nowadays, especially, like, with quarantine. Like, obviously, we're not, like, seeing people as much any- these days. So, like, the one thing that also, when I go look at my clock, I'm like, oh, shoot, it's 2 a.m. I told my friends I would play Among Us with them at, like, 1 a.m. <laughs> 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 or, some, like, something like that. So, it's, like, also just trying to at least get that social interaction in so I don't become, like, a full-on hermit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, Yeah. It's, it's it's easy to get lost in routine. Yeah. But, but it's like um I think what also helps with this working in general at least to also get the mind to get the time flowing faster is also just like either listening to music. I've tried watching videos while working and I just end up watching that instead so I'm just like I should just stick to Spotify instead. <laughs> <laughs> like I tried watching the Scott Pilgrim movie while working. It was <laughs> nice to catch up on Scott Pilgrim again, but I end up watching that more than working so I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm better off listening to podcasts. What am I doing? <laughs> when I'm trying to do something uh, on my own stuff, I'll have something on television that I've seen a hundred million times. So I'm not really like, you know, having to watch it closely. Oh, yeah. Just have the yeah. noise kind of go on. That's good for some reason. Yeah. I've been doing that a lot with podcasts. Like, um, like one I've been listening to a lot. If, I don't know if you guys know, it's called trash taste. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard of it. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's like a bun- it's basically a bunch of like um, otaku's like they're talking about like um, their life in the YouTube scene and also just like otaku in Japanese culture because they're all like they're all from J- they're all they all live in Japan and they all they just talk about like the differences in terms of culture between here and America and also just like just like all things anime as well. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the occasional rooster teeth, but. I kind of, I've, I've been kind of drifting onto trash taste more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you but were yeah. about a month or so ago. You were on someone's. I, I assume there was a community access kind of show. Uh oh yeah, with Megan. Yeah. Yeah, I was with her there. Yeah, um, like sometime a month ago, like she asked me, um, she was doing some sort of TV broadcast in Virginia, so she asked me to be along with it because I used to work with her. Okay. Like I used to, I used to be the like the artist that drew her stuff for her um, story, so she wanted me to come along because not only was she talking about her like her um her own show, but also just she wanted me along for like mental health and also um like just because I I was one of the people that worked with her, so I was familiar with the character as well. So like she, it was like it was a good catch up as well. Okay, now that was that a I looked at it as sort of like one of those cable access shows. What was it? Yeah. Um, I think, um, if I remember correctly, it's like one of those, I think it was like on Channel 4 in Virginia. Uh-huh. Um, it's pretty much one of those like shows, like, uh, if I remember correctly, she told me it's one of those shows they would show like in like one of those, um, I know I'm going to use this word wrong, but like rural parts, like not really good parts. I know there's a better word for this, but right. I can't think of it right. You know what I mean? And also I believe like prisons, I think. <sighs> But like it was one of those like it, it was it was one of those like they talk about like like um I guess like struggles and just like things of things of that nature. So is this a show that she has going all the time? Um no, I believe I was we were the I was part of her first episode. She was she was um I think she was offered like a segment on that channel. Okay. I believe. So like I think she's uh, don't quote me on this. I think she's like given like a good amount of episodes and then she gets to choose like who's on it and who gets to talk and stuff and right. then obviously it's broadcasted from there right so we will quote you on that okay <laughs> <laughs> Megan if you're watching this don't sue me please <laughs> hey if she is watching thank you uh, <laughs> I feel like we're cannibalizing our audience by having like her on the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
But yeah, like, that was fun, though. It was, like, nice. Like, um... I guess also just getting experience, like, just being, like, on camera, knowing that, like, people are also going to watch. Because, like, mm -hmm. I'm not used... Like, streaming is one thing. Like, because like, with streaming, people see, like, the, like, real you, in a way. Like, or, like, if, if a character characterized you, like, you're still, in a way, being yourself, at least, in my opinion. Yeah. But, like, obviously with TV, you kind of have to, like, either watch what you say or just, like... I'm, like... Not really watch your tongue, but it's like it's a weird, it's a more professional standpoint. Yeah. So like, um, never have I ever had stage fright in front of like a studio audience kind of thing. <laughs> kind of, but it was like it was a fun experience. Like it was like fun just like being there and then also just, just like, um, I think, no, not 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 I think, but like, just like being there and just like her, like the fact that she, like she thought like, like it was like also just like a privilege also like just being there like, huh. Like, oh, you want me on your show? Why? <laughs> kind of, like, <laughs> kind of moment. Well, I, I actually watched it, so you were you were good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, like it, it was fun though. Like just also just like catching up with her again because like we haven't talked in a while, so it's like it was just great to catch up with like old colleagues as well. How do you know her? Um, we actually met uh, when I used to go to like Valley College. Um, we actually I used to be in the music program there for a little bit, like for some units. So I went there for like a bit of an extra credit thing, and then I saw her there, and we started talking. And I we started like I told her at the time like I was um like yeah I'm into music, but I'm mainly like uh like a graphic like basically like an art major. And then that, that came into the topic like like oh you draw, and then I showed her some of my work, and then she was talking about how she wanted someone to draw her some stuff, and then I gave her my contact information, and the rest was history. I see. Yeah, but like and TLDR, she, we met school. <laughs> and then she moved back east, so to speak. Yeah, um, I think it was mostly just because of everything going on. So she ended up moving back home, and like hmm. glad she's safe and everything. <laughs> okay, I mean, I don't need to have her history. I guess. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. curious. No, no, but yeah, um, but yeah, like that's how that's how we met. Just we we met at school, and then she found out I drew stuff, and then she's like, "I want you part of this project," and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anything else you want to ask? Uh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else you want to tell us? Um, I'm working on issue 16 soon, so look forward to that. All right. No. <laughs> no, and, and if, again, if you have ever have any questions, or I guess we'll be yeah, we'll be looking at it very closely now, looking for oh. Easter eggs and uh, references. Yeah. yeah, like it's like it's one of those things where I like I only put in Easter eggs if I remember them, and if I remember them, it's mostly my brain kind of going on like airplane mode. Like, like you ever have those days like you just like you're working on stuff, you're not really thinking about it too much, and then your brain's just like, "Huh, this is a funny," and then you decide to do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like my thought process whenever I draw, like whenever I do stuff. I'm just like I'm still concentrating, but my brain is just like going with the movements of what I'm trying to do. And then my brain will just like, hey, this character kind of looks like this. You should give him that color scheme. And I'm just like, okay, that works. I couldn't think of anything before. Right. Well, we've never, I don't think we've had any complaints about anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. So. Uh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll probably we'll have you back on. Uh, we can talk more about 16, I guess. Okay. All right. So... Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> uh, make sure if you like this, uh, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more and ring that bell if you want to see exactly when these go up. All right. So until next time, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. And this has been On the Air with Power Squared.